Okay, so welcome to this video. This is going to be going through a quick rundown of my camera build. So don't listen to on-camera James in this one. We're going to mute him and um, I'll voice over it instead. So this is an FS7 Mark I body. This is my A camera and it's using a B4 adapter that I've uh, concocted with a B4 cinema lens on the front. This is the very nice 2 3rd inch B4 cinema lens, the Canon HJ21 by 7.5. It's a very nice lens and we've got a large matte box on the front. This is a full size matte box, a Tilter MBT-12. I've made a um, form fitting carbon fiber top flag for it. Um, and that's because the previous uh, supplied top flag uh, protruded past the edges of the matte box when it was folded down. And then I've made a custom mount for a very large uh, clear filter to protect the very large front element on this uh, cinema lens. I've uh, printed and made a custom um, section for that large clear filter um, that uh, fits in a two slot um, and leaves one slot for effects filters other things I'm using the stock monitor here still um, it's nice and lightweight single cable and uh, works well enough for my uses I've got it on a uh, Zacuto uh, mount which is similar to the Axis Mini um, but it doesn't have the length extension I think this was a version that Zacuto might have been prototyping before they settled on the uh, Axis Mini. So it still has that fluid head uh, motion and I have added a 15mm rod um, and mount to that uh, so that I can swing the so I can swing the monitor to the side or facing the operator. Just I've also got a top mic there just a basic Sony short shotgun microphone with a uh, fuzzy on it and then I've got this uh, quick release top handle concoction that I've made. I'll leave a link up in um, the corner of the video so you can see how I made it. Um, but it's very nice. It Arca Swiss clamps down to an Arca Swiss plate on the top of the tripod and I can reposition it anywhere along the top of the camera. I'll probably be replacing this with a uh, slightly different top handle soon. I've got a new one, new design in the works, so keep an eye out for that. I've also got a 12-pin uh, high-res cable here for powering B4 lenses, and it works with any B4 lens with a servo. Um, and I'm actually making a servo drive for this cinema lens as well because it never had a servo drive for this cinema specific version of this lens. So coming around to the operator side of the camera, I've got dual rod mounts at the top and uh, dual rod mounts down the bottom, ND filter stages there, and I've got strap logs on either side so I can use a broadcast strap I've also got two carbon fiber rods there going vertically down, connecting the custom bottom and top plates that I've made. So they sort of lock everything together um, between the top and bottom sections of the camera, as well as allowing this custom, um, very snug V-mount plate to the back of the camera. 
it's very rigid and I can shorten those carbon fiber rods eventually if I want a uh, flush uh, top to the camera, flat top to the camera. So it's very nice having a nice tight uh, V-mount battery to the back of the camera, whereas a lot of other mounts are positioned away from the back of the camera. Got dual card slots with an operator card as well. Lots of buttons on the FS7, which is what I like. Uh, despite being an older camera, it has um, everything that I need as an operator. Coming around to the front of the camera, we have a custom support uh, that I've made for the B-cam adapter that I make. Uh, it's a prototype just for the FS7 and it fits very snugly around the B-cam, like clamps the B-cam before optical correcting adapter and um, also snugs very closely to the FS7 and bolts into the shoulder pad but also bolts into the top plate of the FS7. It's very rigid and allows me to use even big lenses like this uh, without rod supports. And having it screwed into the top and bottom um, of the rig and distributing all that force across multiple screws throughout the top and bottom plates, um, yeah, really makes it strong enough to hold big lenses like this that are very front heavy. The, the adapter support is made out of a uh, durable and heat resistant plastic so it's not going to warp or melt um, in the heat. This lens is particularly nice. It's a Cinema B4 lens. Uh, so it's got 0.8 pitch gears like a regular Cinema lens um, on RS focus and zoom and it goes from 7.5 up to 158. I'll throw the conversion to full frame equivalent uh, on screen. It's quite a heavy rig, but it's also a very adaptable rig having a moderately wide end and a very, very telephoto end to the zoom range. I've also clamped on the mat box on the front. Um, I needed a two mil spacer to fit it. So I've um, just made up a little uh, ring to um, allow it to clamp to this lens. It's a 134 millimeter uh, matte box clamp. So this lens has a uh, back focus adjustment that you can do in the field, uh, which is great. So you can back focus and make sure that your zoom is parfocal while zooming. Um, and it's got a nice large knob that you can um, adjust, the, adjust the back focus of the lens. It also has an amazing uh, macro switch at the back near that back focus ring. Um, and it's one of my favorite types of macro switch, the push in button and then twist with a little thumb uh, lever down the bottom as well. Very comfortable to be able to adjust macro finely um, and yeah it's my favorite type of macro switch on on uh, broadcast lenses. So it gives you a really wide variety of shots that you can get so you can be uh, right up close focusing as close as the front lens element with the macro switch and then you can do a wide shot with the 7.5 and then you can do medium and long zooms with the 158 mil whatever the equivalent is in full frame giving you an enormous zoom ratio but also enormous close focus uh, distance as well all packaged in a lens that is a uh, t2.1 to t2.8 ramp in iris uh, so that means on the wide end your T2.1 and then um, just at the end of the telephoto range you go to T2.8. Um, obviously because we're adapting that uh, we lose about a stop of light so that's say T3.5 or, or so. Not good with maths on the fly uh, but let's say uh, conservatively a, a T4 um, throughout the whole range. Uh, that's what I'm working with in Super 16. So that's really great for such a wide range. And if you're thinking in f-stops, uh, this is probably an f1.8 lens to f like 
2.1 or whatever uh, so it's no slower than a broadcast uh, zoom it's just in t-stops instead so a more accurate transmission of light recorded so that's my rig um, and then it's on a Zacuto VCT uh, shoulder pad on the bottom it's got the gel shoulder pad uh, but it's one of their older ones and then that sits on my um, 100mm tripod a lot of what I've set up here is also applicable to an FX9 because they have such similar form factors and similar scan modes um, they can both shoot Super 35 and Super 16 scan modes so you can uh, basically set up an FX9 the same that I've set this up to do uh, very similar work the FS7 is enough for me at the moment uh, with the AVCI 10 bit and um, 4K and DCI at 50 or 60 frames per second. Um, it can capture basically whatever I need to do at the moment and has done for quite a long time. So that's my camera rig for 2024. It's very nice to use. Now, nothing too modern here. Uh, the things that I shoot uh, this suits perfectly. Um, I will say a 100mm bowl tripod um, is 110% required for this type of rig. Um, it's quite a heavy rig so um, it's important to support it well and have a head that can balance a hundred uh, and have a head that can balance uh, such a heavy long camera. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions about the rig post a comment down below if you'd like to watch any more videos i'll throw some cards up for extra videos you can watch thanks for watching i'll see you on the next one